And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is how I've changed. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive colors on our website, or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. All right, so first and foremost, for those of you who have been asking, yes, unfortunately, we are out of stock of our Slim Cut Espresso at the moment. We have a little bit of stock left on Amazon, and we're hoping to get more in soon. Um, The main challenge behind this new transition for suppliers has been getting the timing right as far as when shipments should be ordered and when they shouldn't. And now that we're ordering in a lot more bulk and we're getting it cut ourselves, it's a little bit of a different process. So it's something that we're continuing to work on improving and I appreciate your guys' patience as we work it out. Similarly, we're having trouble with our pens. They're supposed to arrive on Friday. So any of the orders that would be a pen shipment, number threes, number twos, number one pen cuts, anything like that are a little bit delayed. Uh, We will be sending emails out to all the customers who have been affected by that delay And obviously, uh, we appreciate your patience in that regard. So thank you to everyone who has continued to order from us and support the company. And uh, we really appreciate your patience. So today, I wanted to talk about how I've changed. And I wasn't I wasn't planning on doing this one, I guess. I haven't really. But it's it's been on my mind. And I was listening to uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson and his recent podcast with uh, Bishop Barron. And. In the podcast, something kind of came up in their discussion that I thought was really pertinent to me, and it kind of touches on one of my previous podcasts on how I journal, and it's it's an interesting thing to look at yourself in the context of time, because, and I think journaling is an excellent way to do it, because you actually get first-person perspective, and you can see how your attitudes change and how you thought about things change, but... I've been thinking about a lot about the last three months and how I've changed myself because I have, it feels like I've aged 10 years in the last three months. It's just been so much stress and so much work. And, you know, there's a a shattering of naivete that comes with that. But one of the things that they talked about in the the podcast was uh, how in Dante's, uh, in in Virgil's Dante's Inferno and all of the things, you look at the the descent into hell first, and then the climb through purgatory to heaven, right? And it was this interesting kind of uh, psychological discussion about how so much of our literature, so much of our storytelling, and so much of our lives is built off of that same premise of the descent into hell and then the climb out of the hole and into, you know, a better world. And for me, it's funny because I was thinking about the last couple of months and how we've gone through this valley a little bit and and how we've climbed out and how it's how it has affected me as a person. And one of the things they talked about in the podcast was that there is a what's the right way to say it? how do they say it? It was a, like a shattering of naivete, I think was what they said and I think I'm going to quote that. I, I, it was the idea that when we are growing up and, you know, looking at the world, we have this naive perspective on things. And we think things should go the way we want them to, and we think things should be just perfect, and all of a sudden, something happens in our life in some way, shape, or form that that shatters that illusion. And all of a sudden, because of the very real suffering in the world, whether it be our own personal suffering or those ones we love and all of the other good stuff, all of a sudden, there is a, a cynicism that grips us. And I think a lot of my generation has really leaned into that cynicism in a very deep way. I think it's led to a lot of nihilism, a lot of, oh, the world is terrible and it's full of suffering and it's there's no, there's no escape from that. And I think that that's not really uh, a, good, a good analysis of the situation. And I think that, I think another thing that makes it worse, which they talked about, is that there has been a lot of talk about you're great the way you are, right? You're just perfect the way you are. And how that's not a very helpful 
position to start from because a lot of people are very seriously suffering and there are a lot of there's a lot of troubles and trials in their life and there's nothing more disheartening if you're suffering for someone to say oh you're okay the way you are because you know then you're like well then life is just suffering and rather than telling the truth and saying well no you're broken and sinful and you do things wrong that you know you shouldn't do wrong and you you know make dumb decisions that you know are dumb at the time and you know you you commit you know all sorts of little atrocities every day that you're just you just wish you could stop doing you know and maybe they're not the biggest things in the world maybe they're just things like not cleaning up when you should or you know things that you know you need to be doing but you aren't doing and you're shirking your responsibilities and then there's things that you know keep you up at night things that you're you're anxious about mistakes you made things you said to people you wish you had and things like that that you know, if you if you were really truly just, you know, the master of your own fate and you were perfect the way you were, you'd think you'd be able to just forgive yourself. You know, you just let those things go. But you can't. Because we're not perfect the way we are. Things are really broken. And so I think that there go you go from this optimistic naivete to a shattering cynicism, which, as they point out, is both better and worse. But you've got to fight through the cynicism to wisdom, which is the next step. And I've been thinking a lot about that recently because when, when I quit my job, my full-time job to do this, I I had planned for it to fail at that point. And it was September and I was, I I'd left the job thinking, okay, well, if this doesn't work, we'll be okay. But then it started working and it started working really well through the Christmas season. And you know, I, in my arrogance and in my innocence, thought, well, this is just the next big thing, right? This is going to be that new hot, you know, gadget that everyone has to have. And we're going to see months and months of uninterrupted and unending growth. And it's just never going to end. We're just going to be the you know, biggest company in the world and the fastest, most amazing unicorn startup you'd ever seen. And I was able to kind of keep that illusion as we grew through January and March and we moved through those really good months. And even though February was a bit of a dip, it, even then for me, it was like a catastrophe, but it was a short lived catastrophe that ended up resolving itself. And we continued back on the path of growth. And I don't know what happened or when this happened, but I got complacent in thinking that the worst couldn't happen. I, that, that, mental preparedness that I had built for myself when I left my job in September ha- faded. Like I, I wasn't mentally prepared anymore for the idea that it could fall apart because it had worked so well for months and months. And I, I, I thought, well, that's never going to stop. And then that naive illusion fell apart. And all of a sudden, May, June, and July hit. And things slowed so fast and so abruptly and so unexplicably. And I just I had no idea why. And all of a sudden, it, I mean, it was there was a lot of times where it was very easy to turn to cynicism. And sometimes many of you saw that in the podcast, and I tried to be a little more transparent about that. But even it was even worse than I perhaps portrayed. I was very cynical. I thought this was all going to fall apart. There was no way this could succeed anymore. And there was a lot of frustration in that. There was a lot of anger because how how do you have a really good product and a good community like you guys and fail, right? Like then I, something must be wrong with me. I must be screwing up. And then when I couldn't figure out it was, well, then the world is against me, right? Like it was all of these different things. But it was funny because I was thinking as the, they talked through this that we're now starting to emerge, it seems, from our slow season. Slowly, I mean, obviously, it's not It's not like, we're back at it, guys. Like, it's not quite that good, but things are getting better. We're able to get a little more organized. Um, we don't have to run quite as lean as we used to. We're able to get some things ordered, and even though they're a little bit delayed, and the main reason why they are delayed is because we had to run so lean for so long that once things start picking up, if you're running too lean and things pick up, you run out of stock. So we're working on getting back into the swing of things as, as August back to school approaches in September and October, November and those busier seasons that we're hoping to, to see happen. But I'm, you know, I think I've gotten a little bit more past the cynicism in the last two or three weeks. 
And I think that's a result of listening to, you know, podcasts like Jordan Peterson's where, you know, the curtain can be revealed a little bit. I, you know, I'm pulling back the curtain on my emotions and looking a little deeper into my psyche and my, my, my thoughts about this. And it's been good for my prayer life. It really has. You know, you have to learn to trust in God and the worst of things. And this has really been very difficult. So I think I'm moving past the cynicism, though. I think I'm moving past the cynicism and I, I think there is a, a wise a, a wisdom that's coming from all of this. We're coming out of this uh, a, a more streamlined company. We've been able to incredibly improve our efficiency, which we didn't have to before. That's the thing I think that was the most important part of all of this is that back in last, like last Christmas, we didn't have to be efficient. We were making so many orders so much that financially we didn't have to be efficient. We had to get better about our process and we hadn't at the time because we just didn't have really, I hate to say we didn't have the time to become better, which is a counterintuitive concept. But the next step really for us, I think is being able, we, we, during the summer, during the kind of the trials by fire, we were able to really streamline a lot of our financial aspects of the way we do the business, which showed me a lot that I didn't think, I mean, that's part of the reason I was so, uh, melodramatic is one way to say it, but I was so concerned and so frustrated by the financial situations is because I had in my mind a number of what we needed to maintain to stay in business and we weren't hitting that number. But we're still here. We survived. So obviously that number was wrong. And we've improved on our process. We've improved on our organization. We've been able to build a, a team that is very efficient in what they do and they're able to become productive when they aren't. And we wouldn't have had to do that if we didn't have the slow season. So I'm coming through this. I would say older a little bit, but wiser, hopefully. And, you know, I don't definitely don't think I know everything, but what it's done is it is it has shattered the illusion of this is just going to go up and up and up forever. And it has re-engaged my creative drive to evolve the company continuously to continuously adapt to the circumstances to realize that there are times I'm just going to have to go home and hang out with my wife and not worry about it. You know, and it's funny because the Bible talks about that a little bit it says there are, you know, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough worries of its own. I'm paraphrasing. Um, but that's a, that's a, a really important concept for people who are cynical. I think. Because it's really easy to be cynical and anxious and angry about the problems of tomorrow today. But we're still here. We watched The Martian two nights ago, I think. It's a great movie. Uh, the book is way better. Um, the movie was good. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it was a good movie, but with Matt Damon in it. Um, but it's the book is hilarious. It's so funny. And the movie doesn't capture quite as much of the humor. But the book... One of the things that at the very closing credit scene, the main character or one of the main characters is in front of a group of students and says, you have to just solve the problem in front of you. And you may not think that you're going to survive, but if you solve the problem in front of you and you just keep solving that problem and you solve the next one and the next one, eventually you solve all the problems. And I think that that is something that for me, how I've changed, the biggest thing how I've changed is I have become more willing to say, let's just solve the problem we have right now and we'll solve the next problem next. But we'll see. I'm sure it will only get worse from here. And I think that that's where patience, wisdom, and, and experience come from. And I'm looking forward to it. It's an adventure. It's not supposed to be easy. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in on Thursday for our next topic, which is the redesign of the number three. I think I finally have nailed down the design. It is really something I'm actually quite thrilled about. The design is significantly better. And in that podcast, I'll be going over the details of the design change of what we've changed about it, some of the new features we've incorporated into it, and uh, a little bit more about kind of how we plan on rolling out that launch because it's a little bit trickier just in light of how things have been going. So uh, stay tuned and, and be sure to check that subscribe button below to be sure to get the latest podcast when as soon as it comes out, we'll notify you. Um, so definitely check that out on Thursday. 
If you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, please feel free to contact us on the main page of our website at murdercreative.co or you can contact us via our Instagram and Facebook. You can text, email, call, direct message, all the usuals, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. I do appreciate your patience, though. If you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. Word of mouth is still the best form of advertising, so please tell your friends. By the way, leave a review for the podcast, whatever the podcast app you're listening on, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, anything like that. Please leave a review on the podcast itself. That actually really helps. But then also, yes, please leave a review on our Facebook if you're looking to review the product. The way you do that is you click on reviews on the Murdy Creative Co. Facebook page, and then on the left side if you're on the desktop you should be able to see a button that says do you recommend and you should say yes or no and if you recommend it hit yes and then you can write your review so that's how you do that uh be sure to be uh, that being said if you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about send them my way twitter instagram facebook snapchat all the usual send them my way i really do like getting your guys's suggestions it really helps when i'm thinking about podcast topics Uh, i do want to be able to really tell you more so ask if there's things that you want to know more about Feeling for multiple binders for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, ask about our book discounts available. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day and goodbye.